Hi, uh, I'm Gareth Hollis, or well, Gareth Leighton James Hollis is my full name. I'm 37, and I'm going to tell you a bit about me. This is an introduction at the moment to everything you never needed to know about Gareth Hollis. Um, so originally I'm from Leicester, I'm currently sat in a caravan on the driveway um, of my house in Lincolnshire. Um, on a military base. Um, so at the moment, I'll keep looking down because I've just got some notes here. And so I'm, I'm doing this because a lot of people think life's boring, that their life is boring, but if to someone else, your life probably isn't boring. Uh, so I'm in the UK. If you were in Australia or America or Canada or somewhere like that, then just being in the UK, you might find interesting in the same way that I'd find interesting where you are. Uh, also I, I tend to give off a bit of a bad first impression I think so by doing this uh, hopefully you'll actually get to know me a bit better and at least then you can if you don't like me you've got good reason because you'll know me. Um, and certainly not not everything I've got to say is good unfortunately but I mean who is perfect. Um, just a bit of a trigger warning uh, I will be talking about things like depression, suicide, assault. Um, so if you're sensitive, then I'll try and give you a heads up before that. Um, and what I've done is I've, I've got various different things that I'm going to talk about. And I thought rather than just go through it in a logical order, obviously some things are more interesting than others. So what I'm going to do is use like a random number generator and that's going to tell me what I'm going to talk about. So some things will be quite lengthy, some things will be quite short and sweet. Uh, and this is going to be in, in lots of segments, lots of different videos, so it doesn't end up as a, a massive, really long video. So what I'm going to do is probably go for about 10-15 minutes, depending on how long each each segment is. I might might make it a little bit shorter to, to start the next one. Um, and expect me to go off on lots of tangents because unfortunately that's that's what happens. I'm not any kind of trained public speaker. I've not done any courses in it and that, that's what people do. They go off on tangents. There will probably be some bad language as well. I apologise for that. Um, I've been in the military now for 13 years and unfortunately um, swearing kind of just becomes another adjective. It's just, just part of the language. and. Yeah, that, that's it, unfortunately. Um, so, introduction out of the way. And so, first subject. Sorry, it decided to refresh. First subject is number 10, so that is fancy dress. Um, that's an odd one to start with. Um, some people say I'm in fancy dress a lot of the time anyway, because yeah, I'm, I'm in fancy dress as a soldier. That's unfair, maybe, or maybe not. Um, but where I was really going with this is... I don't, I'm not someone who wears fancy dress like habitually. Um, however, when I transferred um, in the army, so I was originally one trade, now I'm a different one, and I had to do a presentation. And one of the the parts of it was about the future of that corps and my part in it. So I spoke about the future of the corps, and then when it got to the bit about me, I thought I'll put in a picture. And the only picture I had at the time was me dressed up as Woody out of Toy Story. And I thought, okay, I'll put it in for now and I'll change it later on. And then I decided actually I was going to keep it because it kind of shows a bit about me. Um, in that I don't care about making a prat about myself, which you know just as well because I do it quite regularly. Um, I know there's there's meant to be a line, and I tend to not just cross the line. I tend to not really know where the line is, so. Um, it, it's good that people get a bit of a heads up on that. Um, so I got the transfer, 
um, I passed the, the selection and then when I was on the course, the, we had some non-uniform days or mufti days as the, the military calls them and um, I, as a joke, I said about coming in as, as Woody again for that and someone said that they'd actually pay, because um, it was for charity and they said they'd put money into the charity thing if I came in dressed as Woody, um, so I did it. And then it seemed to go down fairly well. No one got upset about it, which you know, I was in a training environment, so I didn't know if the hierarchy would take a dim view to it. Um, however, everything seemed to be fine. So the next time Mufti Day came along, I did the same again. I came in dressed as Spider-Man. And again, no problems, um, except it was a little bit tight and uh, awkward to go to the toilet in, actually, because I had the zip at the back. But other than that, no problems. Um, a mufti day came around again, and I came in dressed as the um, the Grim Reaper. That that one didn't go down so well, and um, as a result of that, it was declared that mufti day did definitely not mean coming in, in fancy dress, and there was a ban on all fancy dress for future mufti days. Um, if you're at Chick Sands, you're welcome. Sorry. Um, anyway, so I still had some of these costumes laying around and I noticed the, um, cause we're in isolation at the moment, um, with the whole COVID-19 thing going on. And in Australia, the, uh, what they're doing is the, there's people taking videos of themselves, putting the bins out in fancy dress. So I, I thought it'd be, um, something I could do if I'm only leaving the house sort of once a week, why not dress up for the occasion? Um, and I also thought it might help sort of promote my YouTube channel, although I don't think anyone's really seen them. But you never know with these things. Um, while I'm on fancy dress, talk about clothes quickly. Um, when I was younger, as a, as one of five children, we we never had designer clothes. We couldn't afford that sort of thing. So that that's what I always wanted. And so now I pretty much only wear designer clothes. However. Um, I can't afford them still. So most of what I wear now comes from like charity shops or car boot sales, um, that, that sort of thing, thrift shop. Um, but I, I don't follow fashion, ne never have followed fashion. Uh, the problem with fashion is if you wear something that's fashionable, that's actually in fashion, then at some point it's gonna go out of fashion. I'd rather just wear the same things I've always worn. So. You know, for probably 10 years I've worn jeans and t-shirt or a hoodie, that sort of thing. And I imagine it'll be the same in 10 years time, 20 years time, maybe. Um, because these things are never going to go out of fashion, really. Um, one, one possible um, exemption to this is um, is the shoes I've got on at the moment, which are, in fact, easy to show you. In fact, maybe not easier to show you. Ah, oh, that did not go down well at all. Right, anyway. So, like most of my things, these were bought at a car boot sale. And at the time I, I bought both pairs, maybe paid a little bit over the, over the odds for them, but I liked them and I thought, well, I'll keep one pair and sell the other pair. Um, I didn't know which one to keep, so I put one of each on and I thought, actually, I quite like it like this. And that was, it's got at least five years ago now, because it was when I, before I moved house. And so these, these have been probably my favorite pair of shoes for the last five years, and they're still going strong. And the best bit is I, I sold the other pair like this, so one purple and one orange, I put them on eBay, and I got back what I paid for, for both pairs. So actually, this has been a free pair of shoes. Um, I think I've exhausted that topic. So, next number. Oh, in fact, the um, this generator goes up to fifty, and I've only got about forty-five. All right, number eight. Okay, this subject is engaged. Um, I have been engaged more than once. Uh, the first time I got engaged, I've been in a relationship for 
about 18 months at the time and yeah there, were, there was definitely love there but I just didn't feel happy and in the end ended up breaking it off and it was only about a week after that I think I got with then my now wife um, when I first met my wife she was going out with one of my friends um, someone I used to play I was on the pool team with I used to play um, pool together for old Nick's tavern and then um, before that for the angel uh, and so she was going out with him and they split up um, not entirely sure why um, and he's he's now living in Canada um, and then when I became single not that long afterwards we, we'd been getting on quite well anyway and we decided to that we we're gonna make a thing of it um, this didn't go down well with my my ex because she thought we'd been going out together for a long time anyway um, but just for the record I didn't cheat this all happened afterwards um, yeah that's probably about all I've got to say on that one actually um, but when you say about people's lives being boring um, I, I got engaged uh, I got married to my friend's girlfriend so that's that's a bit different. I, I should point out we're still friends. Next number. Okay, ambition and aspiration. Um so in the military generally regarded as not being overly ambitious uh, I don't really aspire to be pushing up to the next rank it's not something that's ever interested me um, maybe I joined the, the military for the wrong reasons but I didn't join with the intention of becoming high ranking it's just it's a job um, and at some point I'll stop doing the job and I'll do something else and it's not going to matter whether I got to corporal or captain it, I'll still be out doing something else. The only difference will be the pay and the pension. And really, money's not not that big a thing. I mean, it's, it's nice to have. I I'm, I'm certainly wouldn't say no to some more, but I'm quite content with, with how things are. Um, so I'm kind of regarded as not having high high aims, high aspirations, much ambition. Um, and that's, that's maybe wrong, because I do. It's just I don't have it. In the work environment, um, the f I'm putting myself out there at the moment, trying to to make songs, trying to become a musician, despite the fact that I can't play any instruments and I don't have an amazing voice and I'm not young and pretty. Um, so I have got ambition. I'm still trying to do that. I'm still um, aiming to have um, a Christmas song at some point that will get played every year. Maybe, maybe not, but I've got to aim for it. Because if I don't believe in myself, how is anyone else going to believe in me? Um, I mean, to the point at the moment, I've just got loads of things on eBay, um, things I've been collecting for a long time, old die-cast cars like dinky toys, I'm going to be selling all my old games consoles like my Game Boys and my NES and my SNES and my um, Atari and Mega Drives and all sorts of stuff I've had packed away for, for years. I'm, selling all that to, to put towards trying to get this music off the ground to, to try and get um, a single out there and then try and get the, the Christmas EP out there and, and get it publicised because if any of you are musicians you probably know how hard it is to, to break into the music industry to get people to hear your music and you kind of got, got to think outside the box a bit and not think um, so much as a musician almost like a businessman what can you do to promote yourself and get yourself out there and, and I've got some ideas on that which but that's going to be a, a separate video at some point on what I did what worked what didn't work and then hopefully it can help help some other people but I'm going to keep it to myself for now um, in fact it's not just those I'm selling I'm probably even sell my car just because I, I'm not really using it that much especially with lockdown it was my daily driver, but it doesn't really get used that much because I can walk to work. Um, and when I get my van back, 
it will probably get used even less. So it's a car I've spent a lot of time and money on, but I'm getting rid of it because I believe in myself and I aspire to be something more than what I am. So you, know, you can't give up on your dreams. You've got to aspire to bigger and better things. And just because you're not ambitious at work, it doesn't mean you're not ambitious altogether. Um, so I'm conscious of the fact it's now been just over 15 minutes for this video. So I'm going to call that section one, video one done, and I'll do another video shortly. I hope you've been, well, been at least vaguely interested in what I've got to say. Maybe some of the other subjects will be more interesting. Maybe not. That's life, unfortunately. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. So I'll leave it for now. Uh, I'm going to create a playlist for all these and also please subscribe because at some point I'm bound to do something interesting. But I hope. Maybe. Anyway, thanks for watching.